Studios, the AusBiz COV is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COV. It's really good to be here with you and you as well to start 2024. Yes, Happy New Year to you. I'm Juliette Sally, of course, with Nadine Blaney. And what a great day for the markets today. Oh my gosh, I'm glad you missed yesterday um, <laughs> because it was pretty dismal. You know, at this time yesterday, every major sector was lower. This time today, Everything's higher, so, yeah, except a little dip in energy, but not much, I don't think. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm. Yeah, um, I thought that it might be more significant considering oil, Saudi, you know, all of those magic words, mm. priced down. But um, yeah, just a little blip there. Let's bring up the picture of the market, shall we? Pretty picture being painted here almost a full percentage point. So that was really Wall Street kicking us along. Absolutely, so a lot of those tech players rebounding, taking their lead from the rebound in tech players on Wall Street. Uh, we also had that really bumper retail sales picture, which of course is thanks to the Black Friday uh, movement in November. What will December show us? But a lot of the consumer staple, consumer uh, discretionary stocks got a lift today. And actually, I think energy is closing up higher as well. Just a little bit of weakness in huh. some of those smaller players um, but you know Woodside is only off by about a third of one percent Santos off by about half of one percent so it really is a, a very very positive day and, and the banks are looking really solid too yeah okay so let's move on from that shall we and I think we've nailed all of those key themes on the head stocks rallying the retail sales read um, I had a great chat with Paul Bloxham from HSBC chief economist there today it's up online if you'd like to read it so he said the retail sales read Probably won't be enough to make the RBA hike. Yeah. He gave us five reasons mm -hmm. why the RBA is unlikely to cut this year. Oh, wow. You know, a number of people I've talked to this week already, I mean, it's Tuesday, but still have said that uh, maybe the market's getting a little bit ahead of itself and pricing in this inevitability mm. of rate cuts coming through in 2024. Well, at least I guess the sense that perhaps there's a peak though. And I was looking at a lot of those home price data that came through last week called Logic. We had building approvals today as well. And it does seem that, um, you know, potentially we may have seen a peak from the RBA. Yeah. And yes, as you say, and Paul Bloxham says, potentially not um, any cut anytime soon anyway. No, and, and part of that, of course, is being informed by the third key theme today, which is, of course, inflation. Like, all read, roads lead back to the inflationary picture that's being painted. And of course, off the back of that retail sales read today, we do get an inflation read, a monthly inflation mm -hmm. read, granted, but that comes to more on, I dare say, that will start uh, getting chins wagging yet again when it comes to the likelihood of interest rate cuts or as one of our guests put it yesterday it's still online the interview if you'd like to watch it with bis economics you know an insurance policy mm. sort of rate hike coming in february paul bloxham did not agree no uh, necessarily however there there is still that risk and then of course we're leading to u.s inflation later in the week absolutely we've got a lot to have uh, to keep an eye out of course let's have a quick look at some of the sectors we mentioned the rebound coming through in those tech players uh, block they're up by almost four percent technology one up by around two percent healthcare also looking pretty good today yeah and and solid from csl when you've got a company with such a big market cap that's a good things for the market overall resmed is one of those ones that was really beaten down uh, particularly toward the end of 2023, but um, putting on a solid 6% today. Look, some would probably say it still offers good value at $26.50, but um, yeah, we'll have to check in with our our uh, expert guests for an update of you on ResMed in the days to come. Indeed, and we talked about the retail sa uh, sales figures coming through. I mean, consumer staples we buy, whether or not it's Black Friday or not, but consumer staples looked good today, as did the consumer discretionary players. All the supermarkets looking solid. Met cash up by two and a quarter percent. Of course, Met Cash, we had the news yesterday that uh, we've got the former head of Premier Investments and JB Hi Fi, no less, running the tool divisions there. So, probably a little bit of enthusiasm. I mean, I'm I'm not really saying any broker notes out on that one, but um, so be it. Uh, mm. Look, I suppose we should look into the lagging sector. Um, Karoon Energy is one of the worst performers. Woodside Energy by market cap down by um, about a quarter of 1%. And just having a quick look as well at some of the top corporate stories, Illumina was in a halt for a lot of the day's trade, but came back out of that. Its joint venture partner, Alcoa, announcing some cost-cutting measures at its Quinana Illumina refinery in Western Australia. And Illumina uh, fully supports Alcoa's decision to cut around 800 employees uh, on that. So it rallied quite hard into mm -hmm. the end there. Yeah, Warley. Um, look, initially came under a bit of pressure today, seems to be, well, it's actually in a trading halt. And um, that's in relation to some um, 
it charges and allegations of illegality and bad faith by an Ecuadorian tribunal. So look, I think that's a watching brief, but it relates to about $700 million in apparently unpaid bills to a, um, a local subsidiary of a state-owned company called Petro Ecuador. Um, so that's an interesting one there. Just jumping back up to Panorama, which was also unchanged, but um, a little bit of movement there in terms of shutting down at Savannah Nickel Mine in the state's far northeast. This is WA's far northeast. More than 200 workers employed by contractors also facing job cuts. Mm, interesting when you think about how the flow and effects to the fly-in, fly-out workforce, mm. you know what that means to um, property markets particularly. Perth, well, yeah, you know, Perth all the rest of it. 15.2 percent. Wow. OK, um, I guess just generally speaking, we had lithium and gold producers uh, in demand today. Core lithium putting on 1.3 percent again and West African resources up by 1.6. I had a chat today with uh, Tim Waterer from KCM Trading, gave a bit of an outlook on gold for the first at least the start of 2024. You might want to go check that out if gold is your thing. Mm. All right, let's get straight to our guest, Chris Weston from Pepperstone. Uh, Chris, a really solid rally today. Um, how did you read, though, the momentum and I guess those retail sales figures in terms of how it could move the needle or not for the RBA? I don't think it's going to move the needle at all, to be honest. Um, and I'm not really putting myself on the block there because the, the rates markets, probably the interest rate futures haven't actually moved at all today. Um, where we're pricing uh, the May meeting, which I think is probably where the door's somewhat ajar. Uh, there's about eight basis points or step up. So it's about a 34% chance that we're, probably, we're going to see a cut at that meeting. We go into December and I can see well, about 49 basis points of cut. So basically two rate cuts being priced in. That hasn't moved on the retail sales numbers at all. In fact, you know, probably one of the better ways to look at this is today is have a look at the fixed income market in okay. Australia and we can see three year um, Aussie government bonds down seven basis points. Obviously, if we thought that um, if, the, if, if we thought the retail sales number was going to uh, promote a, a higher chance um, or a lesser chance of a cut than um, or, inf or imp impact the RBA sinking, then you'd probably just be seeing, you know, sellers manifest in, the, in that market. And that's obviously not happened. So look, I think everyone's really focused on the CPI numbers in Australia tomorrow. That has the potential to move the dial. Obviously, people are expecting that to drop. Uh, it's about four and a half percent, obviously driven by uh, slightly lower energy prices. Um, and I think if you actually look at the tapered equity markets, that's that's really has done a very different thing, and yeah, that unwound. Um, we saw the buyers step in from the from the from the outset and on the unwind of the cash session, and then really we just plodded plodded along into the close. It's sort of the ASX 200 is really just traded in about a 19, 20 point range from from the opening unwind. Um, uh, you know, so most of the action taking place then. I think people were just massaging positions. So everything happened in the first sort of 20, 30 minutes, and then it was. Yeah, a pretty flat session in the equity market to the end of the day. I mean, I think it's positive. I think you you, you did talk up the idea that energy um, is closing fairly unchanged, despite the the, the big you know, drawdown we've been seeing in the crude price and and the leading we got from Wall Street. Um, so that's that's somewhat of a positive. But and and the breadth through the market's been very positive as well. I mean, 80, 80 odd percent of stocks are closed higher. Um, but as I say, all the action took place uh, on the opening unwind there. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we just talk about markets because? We had a very different picture being painted here yesterday and some pointing to, you know, what's happening in Asian markets. But we chose to take our lead from the U.S. today. Yep. Um, when you think of the biggest uh, likely a path for equities this week, when we have so much risk event on the horizon, not here with inflation, U.S. inflation, Chinese inflation, and of course, U.S. earnings starting up on Friday. What's your mm. take? Follow price, be a slave to price. Trader, <laughs> um, talking and, like and, a true trader. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I think you could, the, where, the, the question, the thing that we look at and, and when the, where that statement is true is, is that obviously no one knows the future. If you know the future, you're inside of trading. <laughs> um, and all we can think about is in probabilities, right? So we're thinking the distribution of outcomes, where where is the likely skew in the positioning uh, in, in the market price action? That's all we can do. And that's that's what we're trying to assess is the probability of one, you know, a, a sort of sideways move or a, you know, a, a renewed move push to the, to the, uh, to the highs. Uh, or do we go lower? So, yeah, you, you weigh up the, the sort of data and the event risk that's coming out this week. Um, you know, with, with market positionings, all those factors. And it feels like probably on balance for me that we've, we've, we've got higher levels playing through. I know the market doesn't like, well, didn't like being above 7,600 the other day on the ASX 200. Um, but it feels like we might gravitate back there again in the short term. But of course, that, that really depends on 
you know, the CPI numbers in, in, in the US. And I think that's going to be the big one that's going to come out Friday morning or half past midnight or so. Um, and, you know, the market is really, really wanting to see this rates pricing being validated. Obviously, I think a, a number of your guests today would have been talking about the aggressive rate cuts that have been being priced. They've been priced like that for a while. Um, but we need, need to see the inflation continue to fall in that trajectory to validate that position. If we don't and, and, and that gets that, that view gets muddied, then, you know, people will de-risk. And, and, and obviously that, that throws a, a spanner in the works of my my equity call there. So, yeah, I, I think with the Fed pivoting, um, you know, quite sharply, people talking about quantitative tightening, um, you know, coming to a coming to a far earlier end, which is somewhat positive, it certainly is for, for swap spreads. Um, then, you know, all these factors suggest that, that there is probably more upside risk to the equity market in the short term and people are going to be looking to buy the pullbacks in, in this market. But obviously, we, you know, the concern is that we got a, a yeah, let's say we get core CPI numbers coming out later this week, mm. yeah, above four percent, which would be a big if. Then, then I think that would that would throw a big spanner in the works. That's the, probably the biggest risk to my call this week. Chris, just a quick word on commodities as well. I mean, we know what's happening with oil in terms of, uh, of course, the Middle East and Saudi Arabia calling for um, cuts as well. But when you look at what's happening with iron ore, is that kind of flashing a bit of a warning signal to wait, or we're continuing to wait to see whether or not there's going to be more stimulus from Beijing? At my iron ore, iron ore chart right now. <laughs> now to um, yeah, it's been obviously it's been very very strong. I mean, everyone's expecting. I mean, I look at the yeah. If we're looking at the 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 Dalian iron ore price now, we're at nine ninety four. It's come off very very smalls today. Uh, the Singapore iron ore futures price is, is is it's a very small pullback from from the recent highs, but it's been in a rip roaring trend recently, as as I'm sure you're alluding to here. I mean, that's just been really really strong. When the equity markets just can't find a friend, we've seen massive outflows of Chinese. Uh, equity funds through the connect um, and international money managers just don't want to haven't wanted a bar of China because there's just too much uncertainty until they throw the the shock and awe driver at that but I think what you're clearly seeing from the iron ore price is is people are expecting you know reasonable levels of in- infrastructure to be built you've seen that in a, in a in a bit of a copper rebound as well um, you know and people can talk about supply demand issues but I think people are expecting um, you know better times from the infrastructure side in China We'll see, um, and and that's has it, it hasn't really supported the Aussie dollar to any to, to any great extent. That's something I look at very closely. Um, but yeah, I think yeah we are watching the iron ore price. Terms of trades obviously do matter, um, but I don't. It, you know, if you look at the equity story, I think the equity story is telling you a really clear message about what in, international investors are seeing. If you have a look at the Chinese bond market, which is in free fall in terms of yield, great buyers playing through. I think that's telling you everything you need to know in terms of expected easing. I think we're on we're on tender hooks at the moment for some sort of policy easing measure, whether that's a reserve ratio requirement cut or you know, a cut to the prime rate. Um, the question is, is will credit actually make it into the system? Is there a demand for it? But yeah, then you've got the infrastructure side of things, which I know it. So there's a lot of confusing parts in China mm. at the moment. Um, that, that are coming through. I'm watching the flows. I think the international flows from fund managers foreign is, is kind of my trigger. I want to get long China just like everyone else, but I'm not going to do it until we actually see some signs um, that other people are prepared to go before me. I want to be the. I don't want to be the first person in there. Yeah, and I do note today, Chris, that you signed your note with good luck to all. I think that says a lot, doesn't I'm it? Not sure, I'm, not, I'm not sure if luck's what you really need in the market. You just need to know Get out the position as quickly as you can and let your profits run. Um, I think you're just going to be humble is probably more the word. All right. Well, uh, big note of that for tomorrow. Hey, I'll read it and uh, see if you change it. Thank you, Chris. Good luck to you tonight. With <laughs> Stay humble, to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris Something Weston I need to work on. Yeah. from Pepperstone. Um, all right. Let's get back to equities here in Australia. Find out what led this market. And uh, Lumina, we mentioned why earlier agreeing with its U.S. parent company, Alcoa, that it's time to cut Kimwana, Kimwana? I can't say it. Quin- Quinana. Quinana. Um, now In I'm getting confused too. W-A, yeah. Because it's loss making. So I yeah. will continue to follow that story. Elders, look, the Agri um, stocks have been named as a pick by a few of my guests mm-hmm. already. I mentioned that yesterday as well. Um, better than expected weather. And Resmed too. Resmed, of course, was that story that got hit by short sellers around August last year. Everybody was saying, don't buy into the, the fact that these weight loss drugs, I was talking to a doctor over the weekend saying yeah. the same thing. Like, you know, even if a lot of people take up these drugs, a lot of people still need sleep apnea medicine. Resmed, oh. obviously, on the back of that 6%, John's Ling Champion Iron. Let's have a look at the laggards as well. And again, there's not a lot of 
like news, as in corporate news associated with these, so far as I can see. But um, it is a story of energy with Karun there, down by 2.7. Karun's share price follows the oil price, so there's no big um, nut to crack there. Tab Corp look a troubled stock uh, ever since they spun out the Lottery Corporation, off by 2.5%. And Suncorp, interesting, in the regional banks. I wonder if that has anything to do with insurance. You know, it's sad that we're hearing about more flooding. Uh, you know, in parts of this beautiful country yet again. Um, but Worley Parsons was the stock of the day, Juliet, and it was Mark Worland of Team Invest and David Novak of Wealthwise Education who weighed in. Let's take a listen. Okay. Right. I'd say Worley's not a great company. It's, got a, it's had a very, last 10 years, its earnings have gone from, starting in 2014, earnings were $1.01 per share, and last year they were 18 cents. Right. If you actually look at the graph, forget share price, if yeah. the earnings graph, which is much more informative, it's literally been down, up a little bit, down, and literally it's about 20% of what it was 10 years ago. Right. That is not a good company. Yeah. Return on equity is 1.7%. It's woeful. Yeah. The return on net capital hmm. has been terrible, single One digit. Um, I, I, don't, I have no idea why anybody's buying this. I'd be selling it myself. I mean, it's got a you know paltry uh, yield of about 3% unfranked. Um, and... Uh, I mean, they did have a good number from June annual result um, up 22% on earnings, but nevertheless, uh, on a PE of 25, it's, uh, it's overpriced in, in my book. And, um, you know, we've seen it double in the last couple of years. All right, let's get into what we are expecting overnight and, of course, tomorrow as well. Uh, U.S. trade balance, we've got uh, the FOMC's bar speaking as well. The Economic Optimism Survey, a good one to kickstart the year, and another Business Optimism Survey as well. But potentially to the downside, which may not be optimistic, would be that Eurozone unemployment rate. We'll see. We'll see what Barr says about inflation because, you know, Williams rocked the boat last night saying that it looked as if, you know, the inflation genie, so mm. to speak, I'm paraphrasing, was back in its bottle. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all of that nuance coming from these Fed speakers about whether or not, you know, the job is done, essentially. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow here, inflation as well. Um, I would love to have a dollar for every time I'm going to say inflation. In yes, the next few days. well, you would, you would uh, be very rich. <laughs> uh, job vacancies as well for November. And... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that the key one is going to be inflation. And then we've got to look ahead to that quarterly inflation yeah. print, which comes through at the end of January, just in time for the meeting by the RBA on, I think, the 5th and 6th of Feb. Yeah, well, first first Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, don't forget. I it's think it's changing little, it, a little bit because they're giving yeah, a statement of monetary policy as well. And yeah. it sort of looks like it's straddling two days. It's all it's all going to be new we'll because research. we won't get um, we'll a month, monthly one <laughs> anymore. Anyway, good day on the markets, up by about 1%. Yeah, it, it was a good day. I mean, there's no way to uh, slice and dice it, particularly when you see those gains at the open. And it was pretty steady you know, all the way throughout. Um, so week to date after yesterday's losses, putting us up by four tenths of a percent. E-minis in the US. Now, US Americans don't look at futures like we look at futures or quote them in their news or anything like that. But E-minis are off slightly for S&P 500, NASDAQ, uh, off by about 20 points. And um, look, we're motoring towards the European open. Uh, inflation rate expectations also keeping a very wary Watchful eye on what's going on in the Middle East, as um, as per usual. Blinken is still there. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken still there, trying to trying to stop this from spreading. And as we look around the region as well, uh, the Nikkei hit a 33-year high off the back of the tech stock wow, surge. There, says, Juliet. Yeah, and of course, looking to see where that yen is as well. But I think was it um, Martin Crabb that said to us late last year. It's funny saying late last year, um, that uh, that yen could start to start to get a little bit more of a comeback in 24. So it'll be interesting to watch its impact on Japan as well. But that does it for us for Ausbiz for Tuesday on a very positive day. It is, you know, any interview that we did today, and we did a lot about the 2024 outlook, about stocks and sectors for 2024, about, you know, the different scenarios that could come through um, in terms of rate cut expectations. They're all there online if you have some spare time this evening. Otherwise... We'll see you from 10 a.m. tomorrow. Indeed. See you then.